video I have ever put off in my entire life the clutch in this damn car I miss it I want to drive it the clutch is even right here it's right here thank you Bobby you may have beaten me in our grudge match but you're a good man and you're letting me make couple of payments because you know I'm good for it and that I am broke and that we are both from the Mazda protege community now the hood is off the grill is off the bumper is about to come off none of which you need to do if you're switching the clutch in this car however that's going to be a different video so I have ragged up that side of the car I've already broken the lugs loose on both front wheels. You're only supposed to need that one. I did them both while it's sitting on the ground. I'm gonna raise her up in the air. I'm gonna take the front wheels off. I'm gonna get underneath it. And again, this does not pertain to you. Bumper's coming off as well. When we come back, because I'm not gonna video, taking some wheels off because you can't do that you certainly don't need to be doing this video take the bumper off when we come back signature products beautiful cold air intake is coming off the battery is coming out strut brace is getting off of there and we will bring you back to removing the battery tray because this this intake is not what you have. I know you don't have it because it's the only one in the world like it. Thank you, Brian. You are the boss. The bees, knees, his legs, and his arms. That's coming off. Getting it out of the way. And that short tower brace. Your brace is different than mine. Not filming that either. And I'm not going to show you how to remove a battery with two, I believe they're 10 millimeter nuts on the terminals and a 10 millimeter there and there. Taking the battery out. We will come back to the actual job of removing the transmission on this car. I know we're going to have to drain the trans and I'm not looking forward to that. But whatever. That's what we're doing. So you see them little bolts right there. We're going to break those loose. My cold air intake's basically off. I just had to finish removing the bumper to get to the filter. So we're going to ignore that for a second. But I uh, broke these loose. And there's another one down here. But these bolts, uh, since they're under the battery, tend to uh, not really survive that well. Obviously, if you've watched any of my other videos, I put anti-seize on just about everything I touch. These were no different. I have changed this pan, tray, whatever you want to call it, from the original because my old one was broken. And I've actually got a bolt that's rung off down there. I got this tray from I believe it was M. Patrick Ryan we're going to remove these and put them in my bolt can and this tray comes out which we need because we need to get to that mount down there just going to put this back here with the battery that's separate sections that I'm throwing parts intake will go in the car so the other thing I've already done is I've removed the underbody trays. You can see that they're back there. And it's a bunch of miscellaneous 10 millimeter bolts. And I say 10 millimeter because that's the size you need, not because it's an M6. Okay. So we've removed those trays under here. See, I've already removed all this crap off the bumper. That was done before. That's off. Wheels are off. 
from everything I've read, and yes, I read everything and watch videos before I do this stuff, we don't really need to take that off. Sorry, the axle nut. I don't believe. Um, I think with a pickle fork, and that inner tie rod's jacked up. I think with a pickle fork, no, you know what it is? It's the ball joint down here. Pickle fork on this ball joint, I believe, gives us enough space to pull the axle and everything out of the side of the trans. Yeah, I'm really nervous about doing this. Of course, we got to take off that mount. That'll be one of the last things we do, I believe. I mean, we'll break that loose, but after we break it loose, we're going to leave that bolt in there. To hold the trans, that's going to be our support. Luckily, this engine has three motor mounts, unlike Dodge Neons that have one. That fella right there. Shit. I mean, darn. That's got to come out. We're going to have to support the engine, aren't we? Shit. Darn. We're going to have to support the engine. Because the bell housing is mounted on that. Son of a... Alright. Luckily for us, Mazdas have two engine mounts. Unlike... Oh god, if that's on the trans, I'm going to flip. Better not be. I believe it's on the engine. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay. So luckily for us, there's two motor mounts on Mazdas. This one, and there's a the rear mount back up in there. There's a video for that monster. We are going to support the engine anyway. Which I'm not happy about. I thought, didn't think we'd have to end up doing that. But that mount on that member down there probably just be as easy to take. That We're going to take that out too. So. And this one here to remove the trans. And of course, we got all of our sensor stuff. We got unplugged from it. Unbolt the brackets for the brake lines, etc. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal to pull this trans. We have pulled the trans on the Toyota already. And it's much newer. It's actually a decade newer than this car. Almost by the month, a decade newer. I'm hoping this is one of those jobs that I look at and it intimidates me because I've never done it before. And we can knock it out pretty quick. Um, I probably shouldn't be doing it right now, considering the circumstances that I'm under with my life, but, I mean, it's therapy, right? Keeps your head from thinking, so, that's what we're gonna do. Ooh, that got dark. So, we're gonna break all this crap loose. Again, I've gotta finish getting this out. I'll pull this bumper off, because it needs work, other than just our job here today. And I guess we'll cut back to figuring this nonsense out down here. If I remember where I'm at. I think we need a pickle fork on that ball joint down there. We can bump that strut loose. And I think with the ball joint and the strut, we can pull that axle out enough. And we are not replacing CV axles, though I would prefer to. Money is not there yet. When that happens, when I end up pulling this trans again to throw a limited slip in it, we will be upgrading CV axles to the MSP axles, which are two millimeters thicker, I believe. Besides, there's 180,000 miles on this car. About 60,000 of which have been under my deranged abuse. Oh, enough of that. Y'all didn't come here to listen to my stupid mouth talk. Let's get working. Promised, got that out. Instead of pulling off control arm and everything, what we're actually gonna do instead, because this is what I have energy for, so we're gonna start to unhook all this. Because we got the actual wiring harness, there's engine grounds, there's O2 sensors, there, there's everything you can think of right here. So, what we're gonna do that looks like a 10 millimeter. No, shoot. Hold on. Hold on. Something's missing. There it is. There it is. Let Aziz light. 
So this little 10 millimeter bolt here needs to come out. That'll remove that harness. After looking at this, what I'm gonna end up doing is removing these three bolts off the motor mount. I think that'll be easier in the long run and I'm not entirely sure those will come out. We'll do that. I really don't wanna mess with the freaking brake lines. I really, really don't. Um, we might be a little bit screwed on that. Cause that goes, oh no, maybe it doesn't. Oh, we'll get lucky friends and family. That sleep cylinder is not bolted to the trans. I mean, it is, but it's not part of the trans. We can remove them to 14 millimeter looking fellas, 12 millimeter fellas. One, two, oh, three, four, two, two, possibly three, 12 millimeters. First glance, remove the slave cylinder. I don't have to mess around with undoing all those lines. And there's somewhere under there is that mount for the brake line, clutch line, etc., etc., etc. All part of the same business. Master cylinder, slave cylinder, etc. Oh my goodness gracious, I just realized what I was saying. The uh, primary cylinder and the secondary cylinder, not anything. I'm, I'm sorry. So then we're going to do that 12 right there. It's holding that line on. We're going to pop out that little sensor wire right there. We're going to unhook all three of these two are the O2 sensors. And one is that I want to guess it's the clutch engagement speed sensor. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will tell me speed sensor plugs in the bottom of the trans looks like. So with one, one possibly two back there but two it is in fact two two ten millimeters back there unplug these three wires here if we remove that clip right there we can actually pull that brake line straight up off the trans might take this one out here leave a leave some tension relieve some tension not a leave we're not painkillers if i didn't already say it we're gonna Unclip them three there. Unclip that fellow down there. That looks like a 12 millimeter hanging on that line there. And one. I'm sure two to three 12 millimeters for the slave cylinder. We'll get that off of there. And that's probably going to be my stopping spot for this evening. I might break these three bolts loose just so they're loose. But uh, I won't film that unless it's a debacle. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to remove all the brackets holding these wires on. Remove the clips holding the line on for the clutch. We're going to unhook everything. And basically get the transmission ready for the big bolts. And start removing the actual bolts holding the bell housing to the block motor mount bolts and uh the starter there we go okay next on the hit list two 17 17 millimeter bolts the upper strut and it's a 14 millimeter let's see if i can get down there where you can see nope not my shoes there that's a 14 millimeter it's on the ball joint <clears throat> probably going to get flamed for all this because I don't know what the frick I'm doing. Um, I did pull the C-clip off that brake line. I'm going to get that one down there first, the 14. I really hope that we're not going to actually need a pickle fork because I don't have one. I have to buy one. But I definitely am going to put a rear main seal in this because I'm pretty sure it's leaking. So... Whatever, that, that's later on this video. God, would you look at that inner tie rod. They screwed it up at the grease pig when they aligned this car. 
Mark would not have let that happen to the inner tie rod on this car. He would not have let that happen. I guess that's technically the outer tie rod and that's the inner. He would not have let this happen like Grease Pig did. It's, it's not about you, bro. You know your name. I won't name you. That used to work for the Grease Pig if you happen to watch this. Whatever. It's a 14 millimeter on the ball joint. And I'm going to remove these two 17s. The strut's already loose anyway from the strut tower brace. So I'm going to pull that 14 first. And then here I do in fact have all my big stuff. And my cheater pipe is up there. Let's get this dude off of there. Fortunately, everything came off pretty easy. These came off a little bit of uh, <clears throat> lubricant. <laughs> so, so we can see. A little bit of lubricant down there. As you can see, I've got them mostly pushed out. Just used a big pry bar. Took it easy on it. It's mostly loose. So what I've decided to do now to make this a little bit easier on ourselves, I am going to, let's hope, Take the uh, the nut off our outer tie rod here. I hope it doesn't mess anything up. I don't think it will. And we're going to take that loose. That way we can take the whole spindle and, and break and everything right off of here and pull out the CV axle up front. <clears throat> I'm hopeful, but I guess we'll see. And I have a wire. I'm just going to hang it off to the side and get it pulled out. Now that I'm looking at it, I might uh, pull the clip off the brake line up here as well. But other than that, down here, we're mostly done in the wheel well. We've got a lot of bolts and nuts to twist out over there underneath the car. Up here, same things with... We've already I've already talked about it done everything on the front do have the motor mount down there we gotta take the bolt out I've broken these loose I have removed the wire or the uh, the wire tenders that are bolted to the trans I removed them but we've also got speed sensors and reverse light wires that we've got to disconnect and this is one of them right here we gotta disconnect that little fella and there's another one right down there well, there's a speedo wire under here and several other things like i've said in all my videos when you release these old clips don't be too mean with them you don't want to break them this is a 2003 car and it is year 2020 so there's that one and that other little fella down there i don't know if i can reach him quite as easy Maybe. Kinda. I know you can't see that. I kinda plan to do this one off camera, but uh, we'll have to do that one later. Can't reach that one quite as easily, but most of this is just nut twisting. If we gotta pull all of this stuff off that uh Claim. You can see another wire tender and there's bolts on it holding it in. Probably pull them two out. They look like what 12s, 14s. Pull them out. And there's our CV axle down there. I believe, and I know everybody's going to talk much crap because I really don't know what I'm doing here. I believe that even that green part's part of the cv i think yeah i think that's part of the oh i hurt my shoulder today i think that's part of the cv axle too so that'll come out as well so that whole thing's got to slide out which is why we are spending that much time here in the wheel well just to get all the spindle and everything loose i really messed up my shoulder everybody and that's why i'm going to try to take off this end and it's like a 14 millimeter and a little a little uh split clip i can't remember exactly what they're called i know my dad would know and we're gonna pull that off and bump that up out of there i hope to everything's sacred and holy to 
at that thing. God, would you look what they did to that seal on that? That was new. That was new. Just screwed it up. But there's the clip and the nut. I'm hoping it comes out of there and it doesn't just spin. And there should have been a. I cannot believe they did that. I am so pissed. Fucker. I believe it's an Allen. Head in there. I can't remember. I did this a while ago. Maybe y'all can see it. It's an Allen, maybe, in the bottom of that bolt that we can hold it. This one doesn't. Can you believe they did that and ruined the seal? Oh, that was a brand new outer tie rod. I put brand new tie rods in this thing when I put the freaking rack and pinion back in it. This is why people can't afford to have old cars because shops screw you over. Do it yourself and learn. Don't pay some idiot to do it. I'm going to end up having to buy another tie rod for that. Mark, you're doing it. I digress. We are going to do a brake job and upgrade on this at some point, but yeah, whatever. So I got that ball joint loose. I'm going to try to get this loose. When I do that, we're going to try to pull the axle and everything out. Um, what we... What we really need to do, we need to drain the uh, gear oil out of the transmission. And it's just a plug under there. It's not like it's a big deal. I know I've done it once before. The plug is over there on that side. It's really not a big deal. I think it's a 17 millimeter plug on the bottom of the trans. We're going to drain it out. And I do have new gear oil to put in it. Redline MT90. What's in it right now? Thank you, Mr. Caleb, MTM Auto Works. Um, <clears throat> plug. Try to put links in the description below. It's helping me out. I'm going to try to pull that CV axle out. Pull this spindle off. They pretty much told you everything I'm going to do. We'll do a quick recap right now, then we'll go over it once we're done. I'm going to finish pulling the ball joint out from underneath the spindle. I'm going to take that clip off the brake line up there. We're going to do everything we can to remove the outer tie rod out of the spindle itself. We're going to drain the gear oil and we're going to pull the spindle and the CV axle out of the trans. I've got a couple wires and instead of disconnecting all this, I'm going to hang the spindle off the strut and wrap the end of that axle in a rag so it doesn't get damaged or dirty. We're going to basically pull all this out and try to turn, I might actually hang it off to this side. And we'll pull the axle out as far as we can and we'll try to bring it over here and we'll hang it from the from mounts and everything else. And you can see where I've been dragging tire. Look at that. Clearly a 215 is too wide on this car. We're going to have to go back down to a 205. Shite. Whatever. There we go. Okay, so like we've discussed, this is our drain plug for the trans. I believe it's like a 19, maybe it's a 21. And I've got my drain pan here, drain the transmission fluid out. And when that's done, I've got a heel bar. Well, sort of a heel bar. It's technically a uh, very, very good crate bar. But uh, we're gonna try to get in behind the shaft here and we're going to try to bump the shaft out ever so gently if we can I don't want to break anything and if we tear those seals we'll have to get new ones but I do have these boots look okay albeit they do look 15 years old but I did order a new flywheel because Rock Auto had one on cheap cheap Thanks, Rock Auto. Sponsor me, Rock Auto. Rock Auto. And I got a rear main seal to put in it when we get the trans out. And 
a uh, lower control arm here and as you can see the bushing or the uh, the ball joint boot it was already like that it's already torn up and it was like $18 to get a new lower control arm so why would I not do that so I'm gonna drain the trans and get that bar on here and bring you guys back after I get this thing yanked loose and then we're gonna remove this right here four 17 millimeter bolts we'll drop that and then we're gonna support the engine and uh, pull off this uh, main support under here and remove that motor mount and uh, start looking at unbolting the starter all right got the axle pulled nice and easy transmission strained and the plug is back in the way it needs to be get a torch so if we pulled off that you can see it laying there it's just four 17 millimeter bolts pulled that off and now i've noticed my exhaust has been leaking and it's got a crack it's always something so next what we're gonna do is we're going to loosen these bolts here and i've already broke them loose on the mount we're, we're gonna take out these and they're all 17 millimeter as well now these two are holding this motor mount and the motor mounts on this car there's this one there's the big fella and if you know anything about these cars you know about excuse my noise you know about the motor mount bear with me right there a big fella god we have to take it out too but to take that one out where i'm going to take out the bolts out of the transmission i'm not undoing it from up top there's just no way so these are going to be actually those look like 14s we're going to pull those out but the first thing i want to take off is this brace here so we can get to all the shift linkages and pull all the shift linkages off we can drop those down that's next this dude here and don't forget to support ah, that's hot don't forget to support the trans mainly the engine with something uh this one should be able to hold the transmission up while we take off all of this but i do have a small screw jack that i use to support these put some blocks here and i'm going to put it here on the corner of the oil pan hold the engine up and uh, we're gonna pull this off so 17 17 17 two here and now we're gonna pull this off and once that's done i've got that blocked up the next step uh we'll do the gear link or the shift linkages next and i'm really hoping that that half shaft in there is not going to be too big of a deal to get pulled out so hopefully it'll go as smooth as the other one so that's where we're at that's what we're doing look at this crap literal hole in it broken off people that i had welded on there welded it on there and they let it sit there and rub on the literally always something it's cracking right there I wonder if I could weld that up I guess we're gonna find out <sighs> never a dull moment rebuilding a race car so whatever I digress that's what we're doing this is coming off and we're going to go to the shift linkages there we go we've dropped Two supports they were really easy peasy um i did bump out these two 17 millimeter bolts to pull off that control arm i didn't show that it's a, it's was the simplest thing we've done so far it's two bolts and i pulled it out as you can see i loosened those so it came out easier i forgot to grab the camera before i unbolted the uh, shift linkage here so 
Let's go over this really quick. First, this one is a support and it goes up like this. And it was a it was a 14 millimeter as well. And it, it looked like let me see if I can grab it and show you. So it's it's a stud. And I got really lucky that the nut is frozen on there and the stud actually backed out instead. So that's all it takes to drop this. We're gonna move this up here out of the way. And the next one was this here. No, I don't remember what the OEM was because I use the Exile Auto Works linkage here. And it was a half inch and just a bolt. Pulled my bushings out, put that out of the way. So, I believe we're actually, I can try to roll around here, I'm struggling. I believe we've got everything off here we actually need to have off to start looking at unbolting the transmission. I think the next thing we need to do is get up here on the starter and take a look at it. I might uh, pull off this back mount here and kind of want to do those last. I think we need to look at the starter and we've already disconnected everything up here we're totally free up front got all of our wires pulled out of the way Mindra O2 sensor of course I have a different uh, header and downpipe that uh, OEM has so my O2 sensors in a different place but this is actually the bell housing on the engine and this is the transmission, so it's going to come here. And it actually looks like I have, in fact, been uh, seeping oil from that rear main seal. So it's a good thing that we're going to be Z's light. It's a good thing that we're going to be actually replacing all this. So mind my allergies. I apologize for the sniffling. Oh, let's take a look at the starter while oh, we're rolling around down here. I'm running out of drink anyway. Uh -huh. So it starters from the other side. I don't even know if we can I bet we can reach that. What? No, oh, there's a nut there. That one comes through from the other side. I'll feel around. I think we need to do the starter next and get it loose and get it off the transmission. And then we can actually seriously start breaking some bolts loose around the trans and separating it from the block. So uh, make sure when you're under here messing around, as you can see, I got the spindle and CV axle and everything. I've actually got a, a chain running up to the spring and you don't want anything falling off on you. Y'all see this right here? Wow. Wow. Okay. And I've got this uh, tied up too. You don't want CV axle falling off and hitting you in the face. And I do have a rag around to keep the splines clean and clear so I don't get nicked. And I did check the uh, the seal. The CV axle went in. It looks okay. Might get lucky. We'll have to pull that seal out. See if we can get as lucky on the other side. But uh, the next step is we're going to pull the starter and we're going to go up top and make sure that everything is off the top of the transmission needs to be. I think I might need to still take that bracket off. I don't remember if I got to that one yet or not. But uh, the rest of this all stays on the transmission. I do declare. And I believe it's one two three yeah those three bolts 
to that motor mount. That's support bracket. I don't know who's honking, but shut up. Oh my God. Oh God, that totally threw off my journey thinking. Uh, I wonder if it'd be easier just to pull that. Oh my gosh. I hate touching that motor mount. It'd probably be easier just to take that bolt out up there and just leave that bracket on. But I don't like having all that extra iron. Nope, we're taking that whole thing off. I don't want to have that mount sticking on the transmission and getting in the way. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're going to unbolt those three bolts there. Just We're going to break them loose, not unbolt it. We're going to go back up top and make sure we've got everything disconnected. And we're going to take those bolts off the starter. All right. Starter's off. It was just uh, those three bolts. This one's on the bottom. These two are the top ones that held. I'm going to put them separate. That held this uh, little bracket. Another wire tender bracket. So what's next is we are actually we are actually going to start breaking some bolts loose on the transmission itself. Uh, I have already broke these three loose on the transmission. I've just broken them loose. I barely turned them just a little bit make them come loose. And we're going to start working our way around this thing. I believe those are Number 17 or 19? No. You think those are 17, 19? What are we thinking? They're 19. So, 19 millimeter, we're gonna go around, grab all these, and then we're gonna tackle that uh, rear motor mount back there that I'm not looking forward to. Hopefully those all come out easy enough. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. So 19 millimeter, start breaking some bolts loose and see if we can get that thing to move a little bit. Well, all the bolts are out. There were a bunch of 19s and 17s, a couple of 14s. They just went around. You can already see like three of them here. There was these here that we already pulled and it's all I've really done. I have supported the trans as you can see under there. And really, what we have left is we're just trying to wiggle it off. And I've been trading off, kind of wiggling it by hand. And I've got my biggest screwdriver and I'm twisting and pushing on it like that. And I know that one of the bigger things that's going to hold us up is this other CV axle under here. Half shaft CV axle. Whatever you want to call it. Over there, I'm struggling to get to it. Just rolled the creeper over my hair. And you can see it starting to... Maybe you can see it. It's starting to pull a gap over that CV axle there. But I'm going to continue to just wiggle at it and twist at it. Make sure all your stuff is supported, people. Don't come under here and, oh, it'll be okay. And then not make sure your transmission supported good or the engine's not... Ooh. Well, I believe, oh, oh, and I'm getting clutch dust in the face. We are loose, lady and gentlemen. 
We are loose. We are indeed. Let's see if we can get a little bit more juice. We'll get it moved over a little bit more. Yeah, I can feel it still coming out of the intermediate shaft. Oh, and there's the flywheel. Trans is loose, so what's next is, bear with me, don't get dizzy. What we need to kind of do now, from everything I've read, is pull it towards the driver's side as much as we can. Looks like I have another two inches before we hit the subframe down there. Down here. Let's see if I can move this camera where you can see it. So here's the subframe. Right here. The trans, we have a couple more inches. We can pull it towards us a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually let it down and try to twist it out. But I want to make sure it's totally loose of the, the input shaft. So I'll go ahead and I'll put you guys here. Hopefully this will work. Still catching on the back here. Let it down a little more. Try not to get in the way of the camera too much. We'll move you guys back here a little bit. about to fall off the jack okay we are currently in an issue and we're gonna have to do the trans press here I hate yep don't be like me Definitely 
tear up that. Ouch. Ouch. We are currently hung up on the intermediate shaft. If we rotate it down a little bit more. Doesn't mean we're really on the shaft but <sighs> well what just fell was the slide cylinder Move it out of the way. Yes, I know there's like 100,000 of you that are laughing at me. 100,000, who am I joking? There's 50 of you who are laughing at me that will actually watch this. Watch me fumbling around with this damn thing. Maybe if it comes. And there y'all go. That shows how well we're set up here. Hold on. Damn it. Not that I really want y'all to watch me struggle and fail and drop crap all over myself. But... <sighs> Why not show what this really looks like, right? I'm going to be an idiot. Let's all watch. I know it'll come out this way. I've only read about it on the internet, so it has to be true. Get the slave cylinder out of the way as much as I can. I can't exactly get out of the car. There. Maybe if we twist towards driver. God dang it! Do you see that sight? I'm gonna have to literally manhandle this thing off by hand, aren't I? I get so many questions about why I'm all scratched up. Seriously. 
let's go over the bull crap that happened here. First of all, the camera died. Second of all, figured out how to get the transmission out. As you can see, I basically destroyed the oil seals. Um, we have a lot of debris in the bell housing. Everything else looks okay. <clears throat> Do not lower the engine. Look at that main seal clearly leaking oil. Uh, do not lower the engine. That uh, was the mistake that I made. Was I thought if I drop the engine down a little bit, maybe I could get the trans off of this CV axle a little bit easier. That was not the case. Leave the engine in its position. Now, a, uh, hold on, bear with me while I try to, without getting temperamental here. So to put it back in, what I think I'm gonna do Sorry, my angles are bad. I'm going to take those two bolts out so I can move this axle a little bit. I think that's going to help dramatically on putting this back in. In retrospect, I probably should have taken those bolts out to try that too. So anyway, what we're doing now is just going to be a quick little bit here. I want to remove the pressure plate, clutch, and I want to try to get the flywheel off as well. I just, I, I want everything off so I can start reinstalling new parts. Uh, look about how bad that was leaking. So that's what we're going to do now. It's going to take a lot of cleanup. You can see all the debris already in here from this clutch that's just, wow. It looks like it's just gone. Um, these look to be, what, 14 millimeter? We're gonna pull this pressure plate off real quick. And we're gonna to have to find a way to bind the flywheel. Uh, worst comes to worst. We can make a simple wrench. I have several pieces of strap laying around. And we can just simply take these bolts out and make a, uh, a bar and drill holes in it to go between those two bolts and hold it like a lever so we m hopefully won't have to get to that that won't be necessary but at any rate i'm going to get a 14 and i'm going to see if we can get these off easy enough and don't forget that the engine's being held by that and one motor mount so don't be yanking around on it like lunatic jared so breaking them loose was pretty easy. I took a screwdriver and just held it in here and just broke these loose. They weren't really that tight. They are all broke loose. I have another little parts bucket. If you're going to be laying under this, put on safety glasses because worn out clutch is going to fall all over you when this all comes out. It's going to create one mellow of a hess. Surprised the throw out bearing wasn't whining. As far as I know, all of this is stock. 180,000 miles on an OEM clutch and throw out bearing. Pretty enlightening. Hopefully, this clutch and everything won't have to come out until the engine's got to come out for a rebuild. <clears throat> oh. Smooth as a whistle. It's almost down to the rivets and spots if it's not actually past the rivets and spots. She's worn out. A 
worn out. Let's see. So, well, I would guess that those are 17 millimeter and those are most likely going to be in there significantly tighter than these other little fellas. <clears throat> Nineteen millimeter. I've been wrong on that almost every time so far. See if we can't cheat our way to victory, as we did on on the other ones here. Oh, kids! Break that screwdriver off. Oh, mama. Might have to go ahead and make that, that piece we were talking about. Let me investigate further. Big screwdriver, bottom. There's a ridge in the transmission, well, not the transmission, in the side of the block, and I've just literally binded it between the teeth on the flywheel. And they come loose. Mm. Don't get that one loose. <laughs> Clearly, that one wasn't broke loose enough. Oh, 
hope that new flywheel's got a new pilot bearing in it. I think it does. probably done this with an impact got it done quicker and saved your shoulders all of this but knuckle hitting. Okay, so that's basically that. I don't need to keep you all on there. Pull these off and make sure not to drop that flywheel on you. It is heavy and it will hurt if it falls on you. So we're gonna take that off and we're gonna take a look at that rear main seal. There we go. Hard to wipe it off with a rag, but you can see the wet oil and everything. And this whole time I thought it was it's been seeping out of one of my catch cans or something it's just been working its way down here but clearly it's this rear main seal that's been leaking and it was nice and had a lot of dampness down here right underneath that seal i already have the seal so we're going to pull that out real quick and if you don't have a seal puller we're going to try to do this with a really small screwdriver very delicately pull that seal out and putting the other one in we're going to grease it a little bit and nice and gently bump it back in okay came out nice and easy this is the new one i've put a little bit of oil on it when you install these you want to make sure that you put them in nice and level perpendicular don't go in at an angle like it's trying to do that's how you hurt the seal they make a uh, a full installer for these type of seals if you do it patiently which I'm very bad at Work it in. That's what she said, nice and easy. That is not what she said. Let's get it pretty even. You can give her some gentle bumping. Gentle. Walk it in.
be patient this is not the right way to do this in there's a little chunk of two by four here That's basically that. Make sure you get it seated good all the way around. See, I'm still lacking a bit down here. I'm not lacking as much as some 370Z drivers. At least I make sure I have the right beverages in house. You know exactly who that's to. And that's from you and that Camaro driver. No, y'all's mouths while I'm in Facebook jail. Three seventy Z driver. Who is actually an awesome dude is the one who has supplied the clutch to go back in this car there we go well there's the rear main seal let's get the flywheel out and look at uh no no i want to clean this out yeah i want to clean this out i don't I want to leave this as dirty in here. I'm going to remove that 10 millimeter bolt and pull this little plate off here. And I'm going to get some degreaser and I'm going to spray this down. We'll probably call that quits for tonight uh, just simply because I've got a lot I've got to do. And we don't all need to be on here while I clean this up. So use your favorite degreaser. Get all this nasty cleaned up for you reinstall this. There's no sense in leaving it like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to clean that up. So, anywho, there we go. Try not to get any on your seal for the simple reason that you don't want to get it on your seal. And we'll come back to uh, reinstalling the flywheel after we spray this down and get this cleaned up. All right, to make this short. This is a new flywheel that's new bearing to install. What I used was this, hold on, bear with me, one and 16th inch socket. Set the flywheel, and of course, as you can tell, it's not actually really on there, but I wanna make sure everything fits. So I got the new bearing in. You saw us put in the new main seal, and this is gonna come back off. Gotta put the plate back on, and. Everything else, but I want to make sure everything fits before I start putting it back together and that I have enough red Loctite for the flywheel bolts that will be torqued 75 foot pounds. So, to get this bearing out, I used a socket that was barely smaller than the actual bearing 
had it on the bench, used a ball peen, and pounded it out. Now to get the bearing back in, and this is where you got to actually be careful, doesn't matter if you mess up the bearing or have to cut it out of the flywheel, if you're trying to reuse. If you're not going to reuse and you're just going to use a new bearing and a new flywheel like I did, I took my old bearing out. For one, I wanted to take it out because I'm a weird perverted person and I wanted to see if I could do it. I digress. So we're going to take this socket like this, put this on the bench, and as you can see, this socket is slightly larger and ever so slightly larger than that. Point being is the main part of the socket is going to fit flush against the outer race. So I had the bearing in the freezer for about four hours immediately came out here put the socket like this on the flywheel with the flywheel on the bench don't do this on the engine and tapped around the socket until it was seated and i made sure that the bearing is sticking out the same amount on the front as it is on the back so what's next is i am going to pull these bolts back out it will take no time at all i have as you have seen, mostly cleaned out the uh, back of the block from the leaking rear main seal. I still need to finish wiping out the shim between the block and bell housing of the transmission. But... What we're going to do now is take this back off. I'm going to finish wiping off the shim and put it back on. You saw how we took it off. I'm going to put it back on. I'm going to get some red Loctite. We're going to coat these in some red Loctite, which is a serious Loctite. And... We're going to put this back on in a uh, permanent sort of way. So, I'm going to get to it. Okay, so we're torqued down to, what did I say, 71 to 78 foot-pounds. Star pattern, make sure you use some red Loctite. It's recommended that you use isopropyl alcohol in a clean rag to clean the whatever off of the flywheel surface that will be touching the clutch plate. And that is about as far as we're going to go on this, as you can see. Have some nicks there that I do not believe were from me, but that's what happens when you're an unfortunate soul like I am. So, of course, of course, I left the Clutch alignment tool on the bench, which is what's to expect if you've watched a single one of my videos. <clears throat> okay. Same thing applies to the clutch disc. Make sure it is clean and free of debris. Wouldn't hurt to give her a little bit of a gentle touch, especially if you're putting a <laughs> absolutely asinine six puck on a naturally aspirated vehicle like I am because I'm a fool and because my main buddy, butt buddy, Robert Kelly, is a bit persuasive. So, on the pressure plate, same thing applies. 
to clean that clutch surface off just a little bit. This is not a Ferrari. Don't treat it like one. However, treat it with the respect it deserves. Okay. See if we can guess these dowels correctly here. Be a miracle. I'll be dang. Did I actually get it right? <laughs> I think I did. Well, well, well. Would you look at that? I did, in fact. Get her pretty close to right. So, let's grab our pressure plate bolts. And these go down to, well, I've set it already on the torque wrench just for such an occasion. About. Well, it's like 16 to 19 pounds, and I have it set at 19. Good God in heaven. It's a travesty here. Did I actually... Oh, hold on a moment. Why didn't y'all stop me? You just gonna let me do this like an idiot? God bless you people. Look. You'll just let me be an idiot on camera, won't you? Nobody gonna holler in here. Say, hey. You're being a straight up idiot right now. How about paying attention? And it still isn't cutting it, is it? I'll keep on going. Am I just dumb? Like, am I dumb? I mean, yes, I know I probably just am, but why? Okay, well, if I'm looking at this right, <laughs> seriously, all else fails and you think you're smart you're probably not or at least you're smarter than me because clearly I'm an idiot God. it's a straight up miracle why well, anybody watches any of these videos <laughs> when I flummox something quite this badly you can tell I'm not a professional, can't you? If it makes me feel any better, which it doesn't. This is the second clutch I've actually ever done by myself before. Done one on a truck years ago. With the father on the truck. It is currently dead because... I happen to occasionally have worst luck imaginable. The good news is, at least this is almost on there. So, I seriously doubt 
anybody on here that's watching this video watch the video when I put the clutch in my FRS however I did somehow manage to make that work so give me two ounces of credit please I'm not as inept as it seems I'm just dumb So we're going down to 19 foot pounds on these fellas. Stick with your star pattern. Actually, this is going to be, I just remembered that. I'm doing the clutch on the other car. Tightening this down, the pressure plate, to a flywheel takes a moment because it does in fact, God, I'm glad I thought of that. Look, all right, what I did last time, I'm glad I thought of it before I couldn't move the disc anymore. I don't know if it means anything at all. However, while the clutch disc is still loose between the pressure plate and the flywheel, tried to make sure that the disc was as centered as possible and that it fit nice and easy for the input shaft of the transmission like so God. Oh, we're gonna quit watching these videos the amount of mistakes I've made today now tighten the pressure plate down when you're satisfied with the ease of which that goes through. Keep in mind that it does take a bit to get the pressure plate even flush and snug against the flywheel. Especially if you've got a pressure plate that is as tight as TJ Pelham. God willing. <coughs> this thing will go together as smoothly and as unproblematic as it did on the Toyota. Granted, we are doing a very different process doing this on a f this car than we did the Toyota. And I'm actually more worried about getting the axles back in the transmission than almost anything else. That genuinely has me quite a bit stressed out. You read enough. If you read enough forums, people talk about how they can't get the axles in, the gears fall down. I'm genuinely a little bit 
worried about that. I'm not gonna lie. If Robert Kelly is actually watching this video, which is, oh my God. There's no way that's it on these. I want him to know that I drank my Dr. Pepper and I've done my leg days so I can handle this clutch. Every time I've seen him, he's giving me some crap about better do your leg day, better do your leg day because that clutch is super heavy. And you Mazda Speed guys, the four of you who will actually watch this video and I'm not happy with how easy that is to torque these that is far too easy I will 100% be bumping that up a couple pounds um, I'm getting dumber as I get older. Trying not to breathe on the camera. Okay, so now on the chance that my Harbor Freight torque wrench is a bit on the iffy side, we're going to go up to 23 foot pounds because that is what? Closing in on my dating number won't go younger than that because I'm too old at this point. Although I'm sure younger people could do this easier than me. Getting a cramp in my leg. Really like to surprise my racing buddies with this next month to show back up with this car. God willing, I'll be able to get it back next month almost there oh god <laughs> there it is okay wow all right let's make sure we stayed aligned here For real y'all though that's clean and bolted up block is clean flywheel pressure plate pilot bearing where main seals on I think the next step is putting the seals in the transmission and after that we're going to hoist this 
bitch. Back up and see if we can not fuck. Oh, about made a real mistake. See if we can hoist this lady transmission back up and not completely mess up the new axle seals I just bought. And I do believe we're going to, A, put a couple more twists on my screw jack and most importantly and I'm going to show you all this because this I'm thinking might make the difference for us especially if it's just two bolts okay bear with me all right here we go these bolts here a and B. I'm thinking if we pull those off, we're going to get all this extra room here on this half shaft for the CV axle. And that was the main problem I had getting this thing off of here. I believe they're what 14 millimeters and there's just a two three of them there's three of them there's one up here on the top so there's one two three we're going to pull them out of the block and loosen this at least loosen them so this has more movement in it and see if we can't Put a little oil on this and get him to slip into the transmission nice and easy. Sure would be nice. The only thing's really holding us back from completing this car and this job is getting the transmission back in this thing without, I just pulled out half of my hair for you guys. And that's saying something because I'm losing my hair. That's what happens when you're in your 30s and you're unlucky. That means that we're going to be closer to hearing some noise out of this thing. Well, at any rate, again... Thank you, Robert Kelly, no homo, for being my guy and helping me with this thing and letting me do what I have to do financially to make this work. All right, that's what we're up to. Um, let's take a look at these seals real quick. Putting them back in the transmission. I'm going to pull them bolts out real quick. And I'm, I'm an arrogant sack of garbage enough to want to try to put this thing on tonight. I'll bring y'all back. Well, I was going to film this part, but the uh, the bearing came out in my hand. However, so it looks like it was a good thing that uh, decided to pull all this before that bearing flew apart into a thousand hundred million pieces. I am going to put just a little bit of grease not too much on the ends of this bearing that clip on to the <clears throat> hold on mm. I really don't know how this went on. I don't want to break anything, which is my tendency here. Mm. There. I'm also, and I mean a little bit, A little bit of grease Thanks. You were just on the shaft. 
Like that, just enough to help lubricate that. <laughs> and I am also going to put a touch around the shaft like this, just so it helps us. And I don't want to forget to do it, which is why I'm doing it now. I don't want to forget to do this when we start hoisting that transmission up in there. We don't want a stupid small little bind to keep us from getting this thing in there. So just a little bit of grease will obviously help us. Especially considering I'm an idiot. And this will help me. Okay, so that's the transmission part done other than the seals which we'll do right now quick. put the bearing out of the way it's falling apart good thing we decided to do this again big thank you to Robert Kelly wasn't for him probably wouldn't be doing this right now okay all right Axle seal number one. I have the box of old seals currently in my hand. Hold on and let me pause Dr. House. He does not know anything about cars. He barely knows anything about motorcycles. Told you, you people are the ones watching me. So. The new seals, thank you to my local O'Reilly's guys for bearing with me. Uh, what we are first going to do, if I haven't already told you, wipe out the area the seal is going to go. And then we are going to 100% we're going to make a bunch of noise and then we're going to put a small layer of grease around the outside of the seal so hopefully it'll help slip into the housing of the transmission ever so slightly better we certainly don't want to uh Tear up the new seal that. Good God in heaven. Let's see what happens. Wow, that was. Thank you, Dr. Chase. Okay, so once we got it started, this is going to be another deal where we're going to have to very gingerly tap that little fella in there. Let me pause. Dr. Chase and. Stacy from their bickering and we put this in. It's not something I'm used to doing, so we're going to be winging this as well. I know there's about a hundred of you literally freaking out as I'm doing this. I'm sorry for giving you PTSD. Well, to update everybody, the transmission's actually back in. I had a lot of struggling to actually get it in by hand. I actually uh, had my dad help me on the top while I was pushing it in from the bottom. And uh, started all the bolts nice and evenly and uh, torqued them down one by one in a semi star pattern as you normally would about 80 foot pounds or so in uh or 60 on each one and that's back in and i also put the starter back on that was just three bolts you saw me take it off not not a big deal and i of course put the bolts back in the motor mount and the rear mount and the last part i did was putting the bottom uh cross mount hold on my lighting is just terrible. 
put the uh, the last cross member in on the bottom. It's just three bolts, so just so I could put in the front motor mount, transmission mount to hold everything. So it's all fully supported by itself. Now, putting the axle back in on the driver's side was really uh, not too difficult. I uh, lined it up as best I could, made sure the splines were splined in correctly, and I used a 4x4 on the bottom of the brake disc and gave it a uh, good little thump, and it clicked in, and that was fine. Now, when I put in the transmission, I did not put in this passenger side CV axle while I was doing it. Instead, I put the transmission in and I took out the three bolts that hold the uh, half shaft against the uh, the chassis. It's just three bolts or 14 millimeter. I uh, took them out and then I took out this bolt on the control arm and the three bolts under there on the control arm. And I uh, actually moved the whole spindle out to get enough slack to get this CV axle in. And this CV axle went in really easily. It just slipped right in perfectly. So all we're going to be doing right now is I'm going to reinstall this control arm. And uh, i got to put in that bolt there and the four on the back end of the control arm. Make sure all that, tight, that stuff is tight. And after that, we will be coming over here and putting in the new lower control arm on this side. It's four or five bolts it's really super easy and then i'm going to torque everything down and uh reattach the spindle uh to the strut the bolts as you can see are just uh loosely put in uh really really not a lot over here that we need to do as my uh, father would say it's just a bunch of nut twisting so it's not going to be a big deal and uh, the lower control arms are next and after the lower control arms are in, we are going to put in the gear oil and the transmission. And as you can see, we have hooked up most of our uh, sensors when I reinstalled this stuff. Still, of course, we have the mass airflow and uh, air temperature, air intake temperature sensor to put in. And I'm still trying to remember where this plug went. I haven't uh, quite figured it out. I think it went in somewhere up here it was a pain to get out and i don't remember exactly where that was but we'll find we'll find that and figure it out uh, i am going to service the engine while we're under here i already have the filter and oil so i'm going to uh drain the oil out of the trans out of the engine and put a new filter and some oil in it as well and i'll just go from there but uh overall like we don't have a whole lot really that needs done like i said it's just a bunch of nut twisting and we should be able to get this car back on the ground uh here pretty quick and uh you won't be fighting the bumper and the hood i have those off for a different project that i'm not going to film i have hood vents to cut into the hood and put those on and i'm going to refinish the front bumper and lip make sure they're on there the right way and the way i want them to be so that's pretty much where we're at now. Uh, we still have the bolts that hold in all the wire tenders and everything. But uh, other than that, we're, we're mostly reassembled. All of the uh, real technical stuff is done. Uh, the only things left are the uh, nut twisting, as I've said thrice now. So that's where we're at. That's what we're doing. We'll bring you guys back when we get uh, this control arm on and the control arm over there, although I'll probably film part of that, even though there's not a real reason why it's really cut and dried. The bolt right there, and then the, the bolts right here that hold everything up. And as you can see, I still have the bracket and the bolts in. So that's what we're doing. That's where we're at. We'll come back when we have something new to report. In the words of my favorite human being, I'm not going to lie to you, I've uh, finished everything we've talked about. I have actually started the car. The lugs are on the hub uh, simply because the brake disc was making noise on the axles when it was idling in gear. I did start the car. I did let it run. I did make sure it went in all gears, including reverse, and let the engine turn. No sounds, no nothing. I did service it, like I said. 
The bumper is literally set on. It's not on, but with anything but my uh, CR3 Motorsports stainless bolts and uh, aluminum washers. That's the only thing holding the bumper on right now. Uh, I got the two underbody trays back on. These two. It's. I really. If if you've made it this far in the video, you don't need to see any of that. And I'm I'm literally trying to throw the bumper back on. Uh, I put the intake back on, as you can see. Obviously, I put the battery back in because I started it, and uh, stuff like that. The strut tower brace. Uh, the uh, one connector I was talking about where I was like, I don't know where this one was. It's actually the speed sensor, and the sensor actually plugs in directly on top of the transmission, so there's not an actual wire that it connects to. It plugs directly into the sensor. So my intake is different than yours. I know it is because this is the only one like it. Uh, Brian made this for me, Signature Products. It's the only one in the world. And then I've got you know everything else I put back together. Uh, again, we've thrown the bumper on. I've uh, put these two bolts in to hold it, and uh, for an ongoing project, I'm going to be remounting the front lip on here and recoating it. And when I do that, I'm also going to be uh, doing something different with my horns and fog lights and the grills, the mesh. And uh, what I'm currently doing right now is I'm pulling off all the old 3M tape I had on here because I did that in a rush and didn't take my time, and it hasn't really worked that well. But uh, I'm gonna throw all this stuff back together, get that garbage off the front. I'm not gonna put the grills in, not gonna put the uh, top part of the grill back on that I've cut. I will be, oh no, you know what, I might do that. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna put the bumper back on this car after I peel these off and I have to fix this where uh, some douchebag, hillbilly, redneck, nothing driving around in a truck with his tailgate down drop stuff off the road and it, it hit my car um, I'm not fixing the scrapes uh, if you've paid attention to all of my videos you know that on the door right about there I've got a couple of uh, scratches and scrapes and I have literally uh, stitched them so that's probably what I'm gonna do with uh, these two big ones oh. oh that looks like bugs so that's probably what I'll do with this one I'll just stitch it and I might even stitch part of this, but I am gonna pull this uh, marker blinker out and fix my uh, my molding on the side. But uh, other than that, I'm pulling off the tape, I'm pulling these scrolls out, and we're bolting the bumper back up. Don't forget to hook up uh, your fog lights. There's one there, there's one back here, and uh, there's the outside air temperature sensor that's right there where my finger is. If you've got a part number for that actual sensor, please let me know. I can't find it anywhere in the world. And uh, that's my other... What the freak is that? Hold the phone. Oh, wait. God, I'm so dumb. That's the other fog light wires that are on me. So uh, that's, that's where we're at. So we will come back after the bumpers on and after I put the wheels back on and get this little dude set back down on four tires. Come on boy! Come on! Yeah!